So we have some major news. Starfield and Redfall, two massive AAA Xbox exclusive games, have been delayed to 2023. Casting a pretty dark cloud around Xbox's holiday season for 2022, this is coming right before the huge Xbox and Bethesda Game Show event coming in June. And it's also happening in a year where Xbox doesn't have that many games coming out at all. Let's get into what's being said and some of the updates going around the industry because there's a lot to talk about here and also a lot to explain of why this is happening. Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to be notified about future content, hit that small little bell icon. And if you want to go that extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. All right, so enough of that. We all know that Starfield is one of the biggest games coming out this year and probably this entire generation. It's been one of the most anticipated games of this generation. I mean, it's the first new IP from Bethesda in over 20 years, and it's looking like we have to wait a little bit longer to get to that game. In fact, I just want to go into what Bethesda had to say because while Redfall and Starfield are big games, they were also some of the biggest games coming out this year and really, Xbox was depending on these games to come out in 2022, the holiday season, to stack that for Game Pass. So let's get into what Bethesda was saying and what they were quoted on saying on Twitter and social media. Here's what they had to say. We've made the decision to delay the launches of Redfall and Starfield to the first half of 2023. The teams at Arcane Austin, Redfall, and Bethesda Game Studios Starfield have incredible ambitions for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished versions of them. We want to thank everyone for their excitement for Redfall and Starfield. That energy is a huge part of what inspires all of us every day and drives our own excitement for what we are creating. We can't wait to share our first deep dive into the gameplay for both Redfall and Starfield soon. Thank you for your support. Okay, so we all know that these games are massive, but they're even more big for Microsoft because Microsoft's going to be relying on these games. These games were supposed to kick off the 2022 holiday season with a bang. I mean, Starfield is going to be one of the biggest games you've ever played, bar none. Redfall, from what we've heard, had a lot of leaks talking about it being more like a Borderlands game or something like that where there's a lot of looting and a lot of shooting and a lot of fun going on with your friends that you can play in four-player co-op with classes and abilities. I mean, we see the games, we see how big they are, and we understand that they take time to make, but overall, I think that this is going to be a black eye on Xbox for 2022 because this entire year, they seem a little barren. They don't have a lot of games coming out. And not to mention, these were supposed to be the first games coming out from Bethesda since Microsoft acquired them. So now we have to wait a little bit longer. In fact, we're going to be getting Deathloop maybe this holiday season for Xbox, which was PlayStation funded on Xbox and PC first before we even get anything for Bethesda themselves that Microsoft is helping develop, which seems kind of weird. But now I kind of want to go into what the article mentions and how it shows that Microsoft has been relying on these. Here's what's being reported. Starfield is an epic science fiction RPG from the makers of the Elder Scrolls series, the first major release from the core Bethesda Game Studios team since 2015's Fallout 4, and the first new property from the studio in 25 years. Redfall is an open world co-op shooter in the left for Dead style, and its development at Arcane Austin branch is being led by Dishonored creative director Harvey Smith. Both games have a great pedigree then, and both are very significant to Bethesda new owner Microsoft too, as they are due to be the first Bethesda titles to be console exclusive to Xbox. 2021's Deathloop and this year's Ghostwire Tokyo both launched on PlayStation first, despite being released after the Microsoft acquisition, due to pre-existing agreements. Starfield and Redfall will also launch on PC and from day one on Xbox Game Pass. So the first thing we have to talk about is Xbox does own Bethesda. We all know that, but it's becoming very apparent that the purchase of this company, Bethesda, is going to take a little longer for Xbox and Microsoft to see returns because they're going to be working on these games for quite some time. I think Redfall has about a five to six year development cycle. Starfield has had a seven to eight year development cycle. Do you see the trend here? It's taking them a lot longer to make this game and make these games come out polished and ready. Don't get me wrong. I understand that everybody wants polished games. So do I. I don't want to see another cyberpunk come out where everything is just not working. Even the last gen consoles were basically unplayable. People were getting refunds on the PlayStation 4 and they actually took it off of the store. So I know nobody wants to see that and neither do I. 
But I'm also understanding that making a game takes a while. I'm also understanding that delaying a game is a really big hit in PR and on across social media because gamers just want to play something. And especially in this droughted 2022 year where Elden Ring has completely taken over everything and has become the best game to come out this year, if you look at summer and you look at this holiday season, not many games are coming out. And that's what I want to concentrate on, is the lackluster year for Xbox's exclusives, especially this entire year and in the 2022 holiday season. I mean, I know Xbox has third-party deals like Dark Tide and a bunch of other strategy games coming out, and all those deals are amazing and I can't wait to play them. But if you look first-party wise, they don't have anything coming out at the end of this year, except for the rumored, again, rumored, Forza Motorsport that might be coming out this year. Now, I understand that people want to look at third-party deals, and I think Xbox needs to do this if they want Game Pass to grow at all. And I'm talking about at all this entire year. They had major growth last year because they had continued games coming out, all the way from Outriders to MLB The Show coming there, which was a PlayStation first-party game, to Back for Blood, the entire Halo Infinite series coming out on there, Forza Horizon 5. All these big AAA games came out holiday season and throughout the year, which helped propel Game Pass to get more subscribers. This year, they don't have that at the end of the year. I think they might look over to WB Games and talk about maybe Gotham Knights coming to Game Pass day and date. They might look at some other third-party games coming out and strike a deal, because to be frank, they kind of have to do that right now because they don't have anything coming out in 2022, especially at the end of the year. And if we look at everything that's going on around the industry, Phil Spencer and the entire Xbox team were over at Bethesda. So I think they were there for about a week talking, learning, seeing what the game has to offer. And I think they wanted to say, hey, here's a little bit more time. Here's a little bit more money. Take all the time you need to make this game great because we see promise in it, especially Starfield. And I know Redfall is a brand new AAA IP coming out from Xbox and Bethesda. So they want to make sure that that game launches perfectly. And if we look at this from a perspective, this year in spring and last year in spring, Xbox didn't have anything. But in their holiday season, they were stacked in 2021. They had games coming out every single month, some coming out twice a month. But now, next year, they'll have a bunch of games coming out in spring and actually competing with things that Sony is doing. Which, if you look at Sony, there's rumors that God of War Ragnarok might be delayed. And you know what? I can see that happening, but I can also see them bringing it out September or October and completely dominating the holiday season because that's exactly what they can do. With Starfield out of the way, with Redfall out of the way, and a lot of other games getting delayed, you can truly see Sony stand up tall, put God of War Ragnarok, bam, right there in the holiday season and take it over, get console sales up, get everything up, especially since Xbox isn't going to have that big of a presence when it comes to the holiday season. And this is what's going to happen for a little while now. Now. People are going to attack everything. It's going to be very weird because Xbox doesn't have games or all those stupid things. And don't get me wrong, they have 35 studios and not many things coming out this year. And I have to say, I think this is the first time in 2022 where we're going to start seeing the ramifications of the pandemic hitting the gaming industry. I think this is going to sort of be like a stopgap year. If you look, a lot of big studios have basically delayed everything. If you look at all the Assassin's Creed games, there isn't one coming out this year apparently. It might come out early next year or even sooner super late this year. You look at WB Games delaying Suicide Squad. Again, games that were supposed to come out even last year are being delayed into 2023. I think this is going to be a stopgap year for a lot of people. I think people need to go into their backlog, play a couple games, have some fun, and probably play a couple of these indie games coming out. Because if you look at across the entire industry, EA has even delayed a lot of things. Ubisoft has delayed a lot of things. 2K has delayed a lot of things. And Activision Blizzard has also delayed some things and don't want to bring anything out in 2022. It's a little weird. But hey, it's what's happening right now in the gaming industry. And I'm okay with delayed games because a delayed game has the potential to be great. But a broken game that launches is forever tarred and will be tarnished in gamers' minds. Look at Cyberpunk 2077 as a prime example of that. So don't get me wrong. Glad they're delaying it. Glad they're giving them more time. But I'm also a little disappointed in Xbox that they have nothing coming out in 2022, basically the entire year. This has shades of 2017 to me. But you know what? There's more promise than 2017 because they have way more studios, way more projects in development, and they're going to have to have a really good showcase in June to show off what they're working on and give more promise to people and maybe even sign some deals that they need at the end of the year to push us over into next year. But enough of what I think about all this, let me know what you think about all of this. Are you excited to see Starfield at the game show now? Do you think we'll get even more delays from Xbox, Sony, and other publishers around the industry? What other third-party deals do you want to see Xbox grab? Do you think they could get Gotham Knights or some other games like that? 
Or do you want to see them just bring out first party games to push Game Pass and even if that means delaying games for a little bit later or signing third party deals? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus I love interacting with everyone there so get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87 just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month so right now i've actually been playing a bunch of rift breaker that game is so much fun it came out back in october of last year on game pass it's their day and date on the console and on pc i've been playing it on pc because i like mouse and keyboard with strategy building games and i have to say the game is very well made i love the studio behind it they're a smaller indie dev but they made some awesome games like x morph and zombie driver that i find to be extremely fun and that's what this game is it's a lot more in depth you build a lot around the world you fight aliens you take over planets you basically go around taking resources to help build your base out and defend it against natural predators on that planet it's a lot of fun trust me check out this gameplay it looks insane and i've also been jumping into assassin's creed valhalla which i have to say is a lot of fun again because i love big open world games i have a pretty good mix of games going on right now i have my strategy games with with breaker i have my rpg game with a valhalla and i have my apex legends game where i'm just going into br shooting people and ranking up and they just have a new season in apex legends so i'm jumping into that and having a great time but let me know what you're playing are you playing something on your xbox series x your playstation 5 or are you on your pc playing something because i love hearing what everyone's playing and i see it in the comment section people dropping what they're playing and it gives me ideas of what i want to play so truly go down below let me know what you're playing because it gives me ideas of what i want to play later and that's all for now thanks for watching and until next time remember enjoy your gaming later